In this video, we're going to look at how we create loads for service cases. When you're dealing with loads, it's important to select the loading tab in the ribbon because all of the load specific commands are available there. One of the things in the ribbon is the service case combo. And if I drop that down, I can see that there are service cases available that are grayed out. Grayed out simply means there are currently no loads in that case. Whatever is selected in this combo is what you will see in the video or in the graphic view. If I select L, I'll be dealing with live loads. And let's look at applying some of those. First off, let's look at nodal loads. If we select a node, we can see that apply nodal load is available in the ribbon. And if I select that, a dialog will pop up, which allows me to specify the load case this is going into, the direction of the load. And these are all global directions. We have some settlement type loads here at the bottom. It's important to note that settlement nodal loads need to be applied in a direction the node is supported in. And for the one I've selected, there are no directions supported, so they would not apply. Let's look at applying the load in the global force Y direction. Let's say it's a magnitude is 10 kips. Of course, the node is the node we've selected. So when I select OK, we can see a load arrow is applied at that node. A comment about the direction on the nodal load arrow. Some people may not like this model where we're actually pointing the arrow to the object being loaded. We can change that by going to the Tools Preferences tab and looking under Graphics, and we have the option to draw loads away. Let's go ahead and select that. And then now you notice the loads are pointing away from the object separated. So you can choose the way you're going to see your loads in the model view. Let's look at a member load. We can select the member. This time let's use the right mouse button. We could have used the ribbon as well and select apply member load. For a member load, the load can be uniform, be a single point load, be a temperature change or temperature gradient. It could be a series of point loads at ev evenly spaced points or a set of point loads at fractionally spaced points. Let's just select uniform load. If the member is sloping, many times you might want to select on projected. A snow load is a prime example where this might be useful. So your load, we, the load magnitude would be or based on the projected length of the member. Let's keep the magnitude at minus one. We'll say it's on full span. We can uncheck that and see we can apply this uniform load on only part of this span. So I'll so keep it at full span and say OK. And now you see we have a member load applied. All loads, when selected, can be edited in the Inspector's Modify tab over here on the left. Let's look at a plate load. If I select this plate on the right, we can use our right mouse button and look at Apply Plate Load. And very similarly to the member load, a dialog pops up. And the types of loads, we can use a uniform load. A linear load would allow me to specify different pressures at all of the four nodes in this case. A hydrostatic load allows VA to calculate the pressures based on a linear pressure distribution and in, we can specify a hydrostatic axis and this is the global coordinate system. Y is vertical in this so exa example so let's just select that. And fluid density, this is how dense the fluid would be and the level at which the load would be zero. And let's make that level where it would be zero, let's say 30 feet. When I select OK, so you can see now I have a linear varying load based on a hydrostatic density. The load I want to look at is an area load. Let's select an area, right mouse button, apply area load. And in this example, the load gets immediately created. And it's selected. And if we look over in the expector, we can see we can choose either a uniform or a linear varying load and the magnitude of the load. So we'll say that's OK. And lastly, regarding areas, we can apply edge loads. These heavy blue lines represent the area edges. And if I select one, say this edge, right mouse button, I can apply an area side load. Area side loads are specified in global directions, much like a nodal load. And they can be settlement loads, but the area side needs to be supported if you're going to use a settlement load. Let's apply this load in the global force Z direction. Its total magnitude can be specified, and that will be spread out uniformly along the area. And let's just leave that one kip and select OK. And we'll rotate around a little bit to see that we have an area side load created. 
So that demonstrates then how we can create the various kinds of loads you apply to service cases in visual analysis.